Hello friends, is your house getting waterlogged during every monsoon? Is the road level going above the plinth level of your house? Do you want to add a new floor below the ground floor of your house? Do you want to make a basement below your existing house? Do you want to repair the foundation of your house? Then let me tell you it is possible. In this video we will discuss how the house can be lifted and what are the steps involved in this. First of all, we need to check existing foundation of house to determine whether it has enough strength to take the load of that additional extended portion or not. For example, if we are going to lift the structure by 10 feet, then we need to check whether the existing foundation has enough strength to take the load of this additional 10 feet length. This is followed by testing of soil and materials used for construction of foundation, columns and walls. First step in lifting the house is we need to turn off all the utility services like water, gas, electricity, drainage, telephone, etc. which are connecting to a house. Then the next step is we need to calculate how many hydraulic jacks shall be required to lift the house. So for this calculation, we need to know how much load is coming on the house, that is dead load, live load, etc. For example, suppose total load coming to a foundation is 58 metric ton per square meter. Then the formula for jack requirement per square meter is equal to total load divided by capacity of one jack. Consider capacity of one jack is equal to 20 metric ton. Then the jack requirement per square meter is equal to 58 divided by 20 that is 2.9 number of jacks per square meter. It means 3 number of jacks shall be required in one square meter area. Accordingly we can work out how many number of jacks shall be required for lifting the whole house. Please note this calculation is made just for understanding purpose and I am only scratching the surface of this topic here. The spacing between two jacks depends on load. If the load is high, the spacing will be reduced and if the load is low, then the spacing will be increased. Next step is we need to break the kitchen platform and other hanging structures which can create problem while lifting the house. Whatever movable items are there in the house, it should be taken out of the house. After this, we need to fill the window gaps with masonry to make the load even. Suppose if we won't do it and if we place jacks below the wall of the window, then it can break the wall and structure can collapse. The support to weak and cantilever members shall be provided to avoid the falling of members down during the process of lifting as the safety precaution. Temporary walls shall be constructed below the hanging structures which doesn't have any wall support. An MS prop shall be constructed below the walls where there is no direct wall support. For even lifting, marking will be done on each wall with the help of water level pipes. Now we need space for keeping jacks below the house. Hence, digging shall be started around periphery of the house and along internal walls. Strong concrete base shall be created for the jacks, so that when jacks will lift the house, the jack should not go down. After that, jacks shall be placed on the concrete base below the beam. Wooden blocks shall be placed above the jacks. Then steel girders shall be placed above wooden blocks. These steel girders are filled with concrete. This makes them stronger to hold the load of the walls. All these girders shall be welded together. In between girders and beams, layers of wooden planks are placed. Same method is followed for internal walls. The digging continues till we reach the foundation of the house. The columns are cut from the foundation. Then the lifting starts. 
Each jack is raised by exact height at the same time and the house is lifted. The jacks are removed and the parallel brick masonry is done to support the lifting of the building. When house is lifted up to certain height, then new foundations are constructed. This may take 15 to 20 days. Then the elevated house is connected with the foundation with new columns and walls. Backfilling of soil is done along the periphery of the house. The pebbles and murum are filled in the plinth area of the building. The flooring is done after the compacted soil filling. And then supply connections are connected. After this, wherever temporary walls were constructed shall be removed from the windows. And finally, after lifting the house, if any minor cracks shall be there, then it shall be filled with cement crowding. Now let us discuss the cost part. For calculating the cost of house lifting, we need to consider cost of additional brick masonry for support, flooring, plinth filling, ceiling, cracks filling, etc. Instead of house lifting, if we go by conventional method, that is by demolishing the existing structure and reconstructing a new house from foundation, then cost of new construction for example is 45 lakh rupees. And if we go by house lifting method for the same house, then it will cost you around 12 to 13 lakh rupees. We can say the rough expenses for lifting would be 25% of total construction cost of the building. If we talk about the rate for lifting the house, then it shall range from 250 rupees per square feet to 350 rupees per square feet, depending on age of building, number of floors, type of construction, how much height you want to lift, etc. This also leads to saving in time. A new construction can take up to 4 to 5 months, whereas house lifting can be done in 2 months depending on above mentioned factors. So friends, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.